Hi, this is Everett from Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Now, today I'm uh, broadcasting live from Chesapeake, Virginia on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Twitch. And uh, I'll be uh, hoping they're all bored and, uh, and welcome and uh, hope you enjoy the show. My wife, Gloria, is in the studio today. Welcome, everyone. Uh, she's watching the, uh, the chat room and also uh, monitoring the broadcast. And uh, today I'm going to do something a little different today. We're going to do a little plain air painting. But uh, what I want to do is I've got a short video, which is about five minutes long. And it's a, it's, it's a little recon video, which uh, I did live, or I, brought, or I, I taped it live uh, while I was uh, uh, testing out my equipment and so forth. So I'm going to share that with you. And then I'm going to come back here into the studio uh, after that video. It's about five minutes long. And then I'm going to do uh, the actual demonstration painting here in the studio. So let me take you to that. Uh, uh, let me get the uh, main camera. Okay, so this is a short video of the little recon I did to uh, a, a local area here in Chesapeake. It's called the Great Bridge Locks. This is a view of the Great Bridge Locks, which I'm going to be painting today on plain air. Now, this is my setup, my easel, my watercolor pad, my palette, brushes, water bucket, and paper towels. And this uh, is my easel underneath a, of a tree. Uh, there, there wasn't any leaves on the tree today, so I got the best shade I could find. And then I did a preliminary sketch just to give me some elements on the, on the area. Here's my palette. I put that on top of a small table so it'd be easier to reach while I'm painting. Okay, I'm going to start out uh, with the uh, flat brush with some uh, light blue. That's cerulean blue, and I'm using the uh, natural hair silver brush, which will be uh, in my basic uh, uh, plain air set. It'll be on my website in the future. So I'm, I'm painting in some of the, the uh, blue colors there in the sky. Again, it's a nice, not any clouds up there, so it's just a plain blue. And then capturing that uh, color down in the water, where it's going to reflect it into the water area. Uh, be a, a blue, start out with a cerulean blue down there, using a flat brush. So I'm capturing uh, the elements here in this landscape, and also planning how I was going to how I'd paint this. Now here I'm getting the darker areas in the background. Uh, there's dark trees back there. I'm, gonna, I'm using ultramarine blue I mixed in with a little bit of green. But uh, here I'm just uh, analyzing the shapes, adding like, some of the uh, textures and so forth. Just get an idea of uh, that range of trees back there. Those dark area, that dark area will set off the uh, center of interest, which will be that white building. So they, they, they're the most prominent part of the background is those dark evergreen trees. Here I'm painting around the, the small white building uh, with a flat brush. Give, give me a nice sharp edge. Working with the trees in that background. And this area off to the right here, I'm going to simplify. I'm not going to put all that detail that's in the, in the photograph. It's not necessary. So I'm just going to put some more trees back in there. So coming out for plain air uh, gives me a chance to study the uh, elements uh, and plan the painting that uh, I can do back in the studio and also capture some of the uh, color and some of the main ingredients. So I'm simplifying the shapes, simplifying the elements, eliminating things that aren't necessary just to tell the story. So that's the advantage of going out on plain air is take a look at the actual look at the location and paint the actual object. Now here I'm painting in the foreground. Uh, there's a, there's a, some spring grass here. Uh, and it's uh, light green with uh, mixed in with some brown because it uh, still, still isn't completely fold out in the springtime. So this will be a nice color to capture here in the foreground. It gives me a nice big area to fill in. Uh, it'll set off uh, this part of the painting very nicely.
Now, the, the part of the locks here, those, those wood structures are very important, the logs and so forth. So again, those are the main elements of the, of the locks. And this mooring, this mooring object out here, which is a bunch of logs in the water, that's another very important element where you can tie up your boats and so forth. Then there's this horizontal wood that goes across the bottom of the lock structure right below the building. So again, these are, these are major elements that I can capture and have a look at uh, to see how I'm going to paint that in the future. Yeah, I'm going to correct the water. The water's a little darker than the sky, so I'm adding a little bit of ultramarine blue to that uh, water mix to uh, darken the blue area. Uh, you can even see that from the photograph. But here on location, I, I was even more evident. Here I'm blocking in uh, the little windows there in the building just to give a little idea of the uh, shape and, and, and size and so forth. Another part of the elements here, I see I see these uh, light poles out here and going back into the background. It has, it'll give me a little more depth reception and also an important part of the uh, design of the locks. Those lights go on at nighttime. And this little stop and go sign here, this little is their traffic light for the actual boats coming in and out of the locks. It has a red and a green light on the stop and go sign. So that'll be an important element. And a little more detail on those uh, logs in the foreground. Now I'm trying to decide uh, where I'm going to put that uh, those trees on the right. So I'm going to put some. Uh, these are these are bare trees. There aren't any there aren't any leaves on the trees yet, so they're all going to be bare limbs. So that's okay. I can add some interest and texture to those those branches when I get back to the studio. But right now, just capturing uh, the shape, a little bit of the size and possible location. But it'll also give me a nice element over here to balance the painting out on the right hand side of the of the painting. So I'm looking at uh, looking at uh, the basic format, the composition of the actual painting. And this is why it's important to come back on, on location to actually see the elements. So there's, there's a final view of the, my scene I'm going to be painting back in the studio. Okay, the... <laughs> That's a little demo here I showed. Uh, I just went out here this past week and uh, did that uh, little video. And one of the important things is this is my initial uh, trip outdoors. And I've been looking forward to it with the spring coming, with uh, getting a little warmer weather to go outside and paint. I've really been really itching to go. So this was one of my first trips. And the purpose of that trip was to, number one, check out my equipment, uh, see what I had, make sure, and also to do a little setup. Also, I was videotaping, so I had to look at the vi uh, angles for the video uh, to capture the uh, the demonstration and so forth. So there were a couple technical things to think about. Uh, as far as artistic things, I was also checking out the uh, uh, the colors and the composition, uh, trying to simplify. You notice uh, that's a pretty complicated area with a lot of detail. But the idea uh, when you do a landscape is to try to eliminate some of the distractions and to simplify. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take it to my painting table and I'm going to uh, repaint that scene a little bit and uh, and show you some of the improvements we can do here in the studio. So let me take you over to my uh, uh, overhead camera. Yeah, click off that. Okay, I'm taking my take you over to my uh, overhead overhead camera to my uh, painting table, and the chat room is on. Turn the light. Okay, we're ready to go. Okay, well, this is a sketch I did uh, on location, and basically what I've done here is I've captured uh, the main sections, uh, the, the sky, the background trees, uh, the little foreground, the, the wood, the wooden ports of the, of the locks, uh, the green grass. So I got the, the five major areas, uh, the, the five major masses, including the water, uh, of, of the landscape scene. Uh, also, my tip for today is uh, make sure if you're going to do a plain air or go out to do a plain air study or a sketch or whatever, uh, do it. Make a checklist. Make a checklist of the things you think you're going to need, and have that checklist before you go to make sure you have everything with you. I forgot one item, and that was uh, I forgot my sponge, which I usually have uh, even on plain air, like I have here in the studio. It wasn't a big deal. I, I used a paper towel to wipe off my brush. But uh, again, that's just one lesson learned that uh, when you go out 
on locations to make sure you have all your all your equipment and so forth. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sketch here. Uh, let me go over some, my preparation here. Uh, I got my palette laid out, and uh, like I normally do with my colors. And I'm going to have uh, the palette. This is the same palette I used in uh, in the in the demonstration on location. Uh, ultramarine blue, which is up here at the top of my palette. Uh, lemon, a yellow lemon down here at the bottom. A uh, burnt sienna, the bottom of the palette. A uh, lysarin crimson, which is the dark red up here at the top. And cerulean blue, I'll use that for the sky up here at the, the top left corner. And all these are uh, Holbein watercolors, artist watercolors, all available at everswatercolors.com. And you'll notice I always put out a uh, the primary red, yellow, and blue. That's that's the primary colors, and I've added a couple of colors in addition to that. Okay. Now here's some of the mixing. Here's a little mixing chart I put together with those colors. The blue is all the way down to burnt sienna. Now number one, I'm I don't I'm not going to put any green on the palette. I'm going to mix my green with uh, yellow lemon and uh, ultramarine blue. That will give me a nice green. Uh, also. Burnt sienna mixed with the ultramarine blue will give me a, a dark brown. You can see here I did a, a transition color between the yellow lemon and burnt and the ultramarine blue it gives me a nice light and to dark greens. So I'll be using a, a green in the trees and here I'll be using on the grass. There's one area that uh, I didn't have on my sketch, but I'm going to probably put in this painting. There's a mixture I put of alyssum crimson with the uh, yellow lemon. It gives me a little orangey look. Looks like a rusty, rusty metal, and that's what I'm going to use there. Maybe with a little bit of, maybe mixed in with a little bit of uh, uh, burnt sienna also, make it look like a rusty, rusty metal. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to use the gray now for certain parts of the paint. I'm using the burnt sienna mixed in with the uh, ultramarine blue, and that gives me my gray mixture. Okay, so those are my mixtures I have. Those are the, those are the five colors. Those are the mixes of the greens and the browns and the yellows. And one other thing, I, one other thing I want to just demonstrate here is up in up in the trees. Up in the trees, uh, uh, they weren't there were no land, there were no leaves out yet. There were a lot of bare bare limbs, except for the evergreens, of course. But the other trees were still branches. And what what I do here is I take a brush. This is a number eight round brush from. Uh, uh, this is the uh, Black velvet from Silver Brush, number eight round. And what I do here is I take take the brush and I really make it. I take all the extra moisture out on a, on a towel, so it's really a thirsty brush now. Then I pick up a little bit of color, in this case burnt sienna. So it's really a dry brush is what I'm using. And now I'm going to use just a little bit of uh, scraping motion. And that'll give me the texture I want. That'll give me the texture I'm looking for for the trees. Okay. So that's just a little 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 demonstration of a stroke I'm going to use in today's. I'm going to use also in the greens when I do the uh, the background trees. I'm going to use that same approach. Okay. So let me put that aside. Now there there you've seen it. You saw this picture in the you saw this picture in the video. This is my uh, reference photograph, which I took several pictures of, and I'm going to eliminate eliminate this background scene here, and then uh, also other detail. Okay, so I took this photograph and uh, I, I drew up my sketch. So this is my planning sketch, and you'll notice here that I have the values all out. I got my dark the dark background trees, uh, the dark logs here, and the water. And uh, I've also got the the, the uh, foreground grass here in the foreground, which is going to be painted in. And I've got some trees here on the right, which I want to plant in, which I did, all, I did that on location. And I think that needs to be necessary. Uh, also the water in here. And this little strip here is that is that piece that goes across the grass. And I'm going to put that in with the, with that rusty color that I showed you in the palette. So that's my that's my sketch plan. And my value plan, my dark, my darks and lights. Okay, I transferred that to 
a quarter sheet of watercolor paper and uh, I, I sized it down a little bit because it's not going to use the full quarter sheet. So what I did is I put tape around the outside edge and then I, I put the sketch on top of that. Now what I've done here in preparation, uh, like I did last week, I'm using the white mask, using a white mask uh, liquid frisket and I used it with, I used that along with the, uh, the dipstick. And I demonstrated this last week in the last uh, video I did. But what I did here is I put, I lift, instead of uh, trying to lift out or worry about those poles, there's some light poles here and I want to save those. So I, I masked out the light poles. This was a stop and go sign. And these other poles over here. Now the building itself, which I'm going to leave white, I didn't, I didn't mask in the whole building. I just masked in the edge so that when I come in here with the trees, that I'll protect that white area of the building. Okay. And I masked in some of those, uh, on the pilings, there's some cables wrapped around. So I, I did some masking in over there. So uh, that was the purpose of putting the masking on, is to save some of those areas instead of having to paint over them or to paint around them. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix up some of my colors. The first color I'm going to use, I'm going to get my brushes here. I'm going to use, uh, uh, I'm going to use my hake brush. This is a small hake brush which I'm going to use uh, on the sky a little bit just to wet and also probably here in the foreground to wet re-wet the paper a little bit. Uh, this is available on my website, the small hakes. I use this a lot, almost all my paintings. And I'll use these uh, these natural hair uh, and the synthetic hair mixtures. This one here is from silver brush. This one here is another brush I have. These are these are quill brushes. And I'm going to use those to uh, put in the colors. And I'll probably use a flat Got a couple of flats here, the uh, Holbein three quarter inch and the Holbein half inch flat brushes. I'll be using those also. Okay, so the first color I'm going to mix up is the sky color. Um, I'm going to use, like I said before, I'm going to use the cerulean blue for the sky. It'll be my lightest, lightest value, my lightest color on the on the paper. It'll be the cerulean blue. So I'll mix up a little mixture of that. Then I'm going to go in here with my my hate brush loaded with water, and I'm going to re-wet the sky a little bit. So that'll help the uh, the paint to flow on the paper. A little little wet on wet. So re-wet the sky, and I'll take that cerulean blue now and go ahead and put right into the right into the water. Go across the top. And as I come down, I'll lighten it up just a little bit. So it gets a little lighter as you come down in the painting. And I'm just going to cover up over top of these uh, edge of the trees because they'll be, they'll be darker. The darker trees will cover anything here uh, behind. And as I mentioned before, I think last we did this, is like after I wet the after I paint the paper, and I come along with a piece of tissue here and I wipe off the excess moisture on the edges. That'll keep from making blossoms in the water in the painting. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of uh ultramarine blue now. And I'm going to also, let me show you something else I do. Uh, here's another another masking technique I have. And this is just to simplify this. This is a uh, blue painter's tape. And what I do there, if I have a straight edge, like this uh, edge of the, the grass here, I'm just going to go ahead and put that in so I don't have to worry about it. And then I can get my, get my brush loaded with uh, ultramarine blue. This is going to be the water. Then I'm going to paint the water in, and I come right up here to this uh, mas this masking, which is the, the tape, and I don't have to worry about that edge. So that's another another technique, another tip for masking out part of the painting. 
Uh, you can do this in plain air too. When you're doing plain air, if you want to mask out an area, you can use tape to mask out part of that area. So that makes it, it makes it a lot easier to function. It takes a little bit of planning, but when you're planning the, when I did this painting outdoors, I was also planning the, the painting steps that I was going to do in the studio because I knew I was going to do a demonstration of uh, the things I learned. So the the, uh, the recon trip was important to collect data because I, I got the colors I was looking for. Uh, I looked at some of the elements that I was going to paint and a little bit of idea of how I was going to paint them. I left a little bit of white there for the little bit of ripples in, this, in the water. And there's a little patch over here on the side. On the other side of this log column here. Now, water, uh, watercolor is always going to dry 40% lighter, so it may look dark at this point, but it's going to it's going to lighten up as uh, as it dries. Okay. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the dryer on and make sure that's dry. So I'm going to go ahead. Now I'm going to take another piece of this tape. I might as well do it again. I'm going to take the piece of tape and go to the other side. Now I'm going to mix up uh, a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue. And I'm going to add some yellow lemon to it. There's my green. So blue. The blue of the uh, ultramarine blue and the yellow lemon gives me the green I want. Okay. And that's going to be this green grass down here at the bottom. And I'm also going to add a little bit of uh, a little touch of uh, burnt sienna because the, the grass was a little brown. It wasn't, uh, wasn't purely green. It had brown in it because it's spring springtime. And I can modify that green a little bit with a little more yellow. So it's a mixture of uh, ultramarine blue, yellow lemon, and a touch of burnt sienna to give me a little bit of brown. And it's going to make it a multiple color. You see those colors in there? You see little browns, a little bit of blues. So it's kind of a mixture. Okay, and I'm going to wipe off the edges. It takes away that moisture off the edge of the painting so it doesn't creep in. Don't give me any blossoms over here. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get those background trees. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to use another mix of uh, ultramarine blue and I need a lot more I need a lot more for this because it's a big area so I'm going to take a lot of that blue mix it in I'm going to mix a, just a touch of yellow in that to give me a green a green a dark green mix now I'm going to go ahead and start painting in the the background trees here and these are dark these are evergreens so they're dark greens and you saw me put this in the in the, the video 
where I was putting in the, the shapes of the trees and so forth. So these uh, this, these background trees now give me the give me the backdrop to this uh, white building. And that's why it's so important. Get, you, you look at a painting and you say, okay, well, how am I going to get the the darks and lights to to work out in the painting? Well, you find something that's uh, an interesting shape, but also you want to find the extra an interesting value that would uh, show off the painting. And this is where I discovered that, uh, uh, not just from the photograph, but by looking at it on the site, I could tell that the dark trees were going to work in the background. And I protected the edge of this building here so I wouldn't go into it with a, with a, brush, with a brush stroke. So I want it very carefully. I've masked part of that out, so that's okay. But that's protected. So now I can go ahead and put in the rest of the colors here. You know, very, I'll put a little more darker blue here at the bottom. So, you know, I can, what I do is I change the mixture of the yellow and blue. So I have a, a variation. Don't want the same color all the way through. So I'll get a, I'll get a variation of colors. Now coming around the edge of this building here is, is protected. So I'm going to go ahead and go right up next to it. Right across section here and I'm making sure my edges I'm going to come back it'll be it'll be more edges uh, more edge work over here but I'm getting a little making sure my edges are a little bit uh, variable uh, and I don't need this tape anymore so I can take this off and come right on down here And I think I'll change the brush to a, a flat brush so I can get a straight edge here. And over here, come over here again. Use the go back to the old brush again and get more in there. Yeah, I'll load, load up the brush some more paint. A little bit of yellow in there. Give me a little green. Get a nice dark color in here. So I can come up to the edge of these the items that these subject matter because I got covered with, with masking fluid, which will protect the edges. And I'll go in with a with a flat brush. You know, working on the back, working on backgrounds. There's a little, some little posts around here on top of this locks that uh, are part of the are part of the construction of the rock locks. So I'm, I'm painting around those. And I'm using a flat. I'm using the corner of the brush. Uh, I use the end of the brush to core the brush. So it, I, it really, I use the flat brush almost like a round brush because I can use the edges and the corners. So the flat brush is a very versatile. But it covers a big area if you move it out into the larger area, but also for detail, I use a corner here almost like a round brush. It gives me a nice fine area in which to control the paint. It gives me a nice, gives me a nice sharp edge. And coming right down here to this post here, I'll post, this, this post comes out. From the foreground, but it also sets off this edge of the of the locks over here. And I'll come around this post here and just finish off the edge. Okay. All right. Now my next mixture is going to basically be. Uh, 
I think what I'll do is I've got, let me, let me dry, make sure it's dry. Do a quick dry on the foreground here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do now is I'm, uh, this mixture of, that I thought about, and I, I use it on location, it worked real well. <clears throat> Here, let me let me move the the paint on the palette a little bit here. Give me some room. So I clean the palette with my sponge. This is a sponge I've taught, not this sponge, but another sponge I use even in plain air. It helped clean up the palette. Yeah, clean up the water. So that was the one thing I was missing on my on my plain air trip. But believe me, next time I go, I won't miss it. I'll know where exactly where it is. So you always learn every time you go out and do something like that, you're going to, you're going to have lessons learned. You're going to find out that you forgot something or you needed something else. I, you might need a, another, another table or a bench or something to work on something light and portable. Now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that, just a touch of yellow. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get a yellowy and a little bit of burnt sienna. I want to get a rusty color. So it's going to have a little bit of red, a little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow mixed in there. And then, yeah, that's it. Okay, that's the color I want. It's like a rusty color. Uh, and I really mixed up with the, uh, I used uh, a listen crimson. I added a little bit of a uh, yellow lemon to give it an orangey look. Then I added a little bit of burnt sienna on top of that to give it even a more, even a more detail. Uh, color change. So I'm going to paint this in now. This is a, this is a rusty color. This is, this is metal along the side on the edge of the, of the locks next to the grass. So when, when you're out, when you're out the plain air, you're also checking the, the colors. You're checking the match, matching the colors and usually in plain air, uh, the purpose is to uh, capture capture the subject and also to collect data. Uh, it, it's it's uh, it it really is not the purpose is not to do really do a full not to do a finished painting. You can do a finished painting in plain air, and I'm going to do that. But the the purpose is to go out and collect the data you need to make a painting, and this is what I did. And uh, finding a color that I wanted to match this particular part. Uh, when I came back to the studio, I, I tested it out and it worked out just fine. So that that's that's the color I used for that rail, and you'll see that working out. And I'll show that we'll show the picture and also the, the final results here. Okay, the last thing I have to do now is put the uh, put the logs on. So I'll use the two flat brushes, the the whole bind the. Uh, Three quarter inch and the whole bind half inch will do the job. So mix up a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'll bring in a little bit of that ultramarine blue. To give me a, a darker color if I need it. So I got my mixture here. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go in, I'm gonna paint these these logs. These are these are really a tie-up that way you can tie up a the boats here and rocks and, and the chips and so forth can tie up or waiting for the locks to open up. So uh, the, these are these are all over the place. You find there's probably a, a dozen of these mooring logs along the edge of the the waterway here that you can tie boats up with. And I've, I've seen all kinds of boats uh, tied up there waiting for the locks to open up. And the locks open up on schedule some days, especially in the summertime, they'll open up on certain hours. And then you'll see the boats waiting in line. And, uh, and during, during the off season, you have to, you really have to call in and make a schedule. Uh, make sure they're open. But they, they all, locks work 24-7. Uh, they have, I've seen, I've seen boats going through it in, after dark. So they go through there all the time. Because those poles there have lights on them, so they can work at night. Uh, 
all around the clock. Fix up some more of that brown. So I'm picking up a little bit of ultramarine now and darken that, darken that brown up a little bit. So a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Gives me a nice wood color of these uh, of these logs that are in the water. Again, I'm using the corner of the brush here, here coming down to a small area down here. I've just use the corner of the brush and it takes me right down and I can go right and just avoid anything else except for what I want to paint. Now I got some more of these paint brushes. I got a small area. So the, the, the lesson there is to uh, use the tool for the job. Here I got a small area, so I'm going to use a smaller brush. And this, this is the half inch flat brush. Uh, hold by a natural hair. Uh, synthetic, synthetic, but they're really, really nice. Again, they hold a nice edge. They hold lots of paint. So these are good, these are good quality synthetic brushes. A half inch and a three quarter inch Holbein watercolor brushes. I've been using them for a long time. It pulls right down into the water. Okay. Now the top, the top of this one is a little bit lighter because it's uh, you know we're hitting the, the sun's hitting uh, sunlight's hitting the top of these pull of logs so it'll be a little bit lighter here at the top so I'll indicate that also right here and this pole here they have a pole that sticks out in the center that's the area where you would throw your your rope over if you were mooring if you were mooring on this section here you would throw your rope over this center piece and that's how you would attach yourself to this this mooring area okay now i want to get a lighter mix now so i want a lighter mix so i'm going to take this here i'm going to add water to this brown mixture i have and i'm going to paint in a lighter mix down here so if I want a lighter color of brown, or where do I have brown, then I just add water to it and it gives me a lighter, a lighter mixture. And that's the, the best part of watercolor is that you can add pigment to it to make it darker or add color to it to make it darker. And you can add water to it to make it lighter. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just lighting up that, lightening up that color because this section here will be lighter. And again, I'm using the corner of the brush to get control of where I am. The corner of the brush, side of the brush, right there, and I don't, I don't touch anything else. Okay. Now I think I'll use uh, the other brush I use a lot is my. My black velvet from silver brush and this I get in for little corners and so forth so I'm gonna take a little bit of that brown and I'm going to go in and, and uh, put brown on these posts here no, I can't do that yet I still got some masking fluid on so I'm almost ready to take the masking fluid off anyway okay. so let me go over I got more two more areas of paint over here I take that light brown yeah I'll go back to yeah very good I'm going to, this here is a lighter brown over here with, with some dark on it. But I'm going to start with a lighter brown first. Okay. Now there's one area that's got some grays to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a gray. And the gray color I'm going to have is a mixture of, guess what? Burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. My go-to brown. My go-to brown, my go-to gray. So by adding just a little bit more blue to it, adding a little bit more blue to the mixture, 
I'm going to make it gray. And that's going to be pretty gray right there. But I don't want it to be too dark, so I'm going to have to lighten it up a little bit. So that's my gray mixture. If you can see that, that there, and I'll test it on my sheet. There's the gray. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful gray? Okay, if you don't know what I'm talking about. But if, that's the gray color I did from the Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue. Okay, what I'm going to do there now, I'm going to put that on this section here. These, these, uh, these part, this part of the locks is a light gray compared to the dark brown of the uh, mooring section. This is another section of the locks. The uh, the rocks are very interesting. They 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 are they help control the level of water as the as the boats are coming through from inland to out out toward the ocean, going through the sounds. And I was I was told by the operator that uh, the conditions of the level of water depends a lot on uh, the time of the year. Uh, whether the weather has been raining or a lot of water being pushed around so forth. So there's a lot of things that have to be done to control uh, the amount of water done. So what I'm going to do is dry that and I'm going to take the masking fluid off. And I got the final, final touch. Of These are the two, this one here, this is the uh, silver brush, uh, black velvet, uh, half inch flat, and this is number eight round. These are the two brushes I used on plain air. These are the two brushes I used on location. So you can see those two right there I used in the studio, but also when I go on plain air, these are the two brushes I take with me. And those are what I used on the demonstration. So uh, we'll talk about more of those later as we go along. What I'm gonna do now is take my masking fluid. So I got the masking fluid on, I'm gonna use the uh, rubber cement pickup uh, to take that off. So I got the uh, masking over here on this section. So this was the planning step I had. I said, well, rather than try to paint around these items, I said, just go and mask them in. It'll be a lot easier to and to be able to go faster uh, the demonstration. And that's the, that's the whole purpose of masking fluid is to uh, protect, protect the areas of the painting that you uh, want to, don't want to get paint over it at, at, at that time. Or you want to change the color later on. Okay, it's all been new now. Yeah, I have other videos on, on YouTube uh, talking about masking and all kinds of techniques for masking. I got a whole series of masking videos. Now, this one here now, I'm going to go in now and do my final, uh, do my final touches. So I'm going to use my small brushes, uh, mainly uh, the plain air brushes I'm using. This is the silver brush, black velvet. And I'm going to uh, use mix a dark Dark, dark blue with the brown and I'll go ahead and paint in the windows here. I got the windows I put my 
Uh, this will be the point painting the windows here. So now you're going to start seeing that uh, this painting takes shape now when I start putting in detail. So the photograph that I did that showed you in the in the beginning and also uh, we'll go over at the end uh, is these are the details. And take the flat brush with a with that gray. And I'll paint in some shadow here. This will give a little little dimension. To this item here, there's a there's a part of the structure here that's right in right in front of the building, right by the building. So you notice these things when you go out on location, you notice you know things that are there. And then you say, well, how am I going to paint that? And that's the whole purpose of, uh, of visiting a location is to, is to investigate how you're going to paint an object. And I also got the, the back of the building here. I put this in the, just slightly showing the back of the building. I'm using you know, I'm using two brushes. Oh, using them uh, simultaneously here. And I'm going to put a little a little a little trim, a little edge along. This is a little shadow pattern on the edge of the, the roof here. And it'll be a little shadow pattern along along the top of this little. That's a box or something. It might be a storage container or something. Probably some equipment. And I'll use that gray. I'm also going to, let's see, before I do the gray, I better finish off these other ones. I got the, the dark brown. I better use this brush. Okay. Again, selecting brushes that'll do the job. I'm going to go in and put in some darks here. Uh, there's some little shadows. This part of the structure. There's a structure here in the locks. It's, uh, it's part of the back of it. Uh, it's just part of the, it's just part of the it's not part of the building, but it's part of the landscape here. That part of the locks it keeps the water from flowing any further. It's like a blockade. So you can imagine the locks are like a big bathtub. They put the they put the boats in there and then they raise the water or lower the water depending on what. <laughs> it's like a big bathtub. They put the boats in. And then they actually add water or take out water to raise the level. So it's an amazing operation. And there are there are literally hundreds of boats that go through that that locks almost on, in the summertime on a daily basis. There probably there's probably a, at least a hundred boats go through there. Or probably I never counted, but I'm probably sure it's at least a hundred a day. It's probably more than that. I'm just trying to estimate. It's a very busy place during the summertime. And then uh, using this uh, flat brush again, now with a little darker brown, uh, I'm going to paint this section in. Just, I'm just I'm just painting and filling in some of these areas just to show a structure it's a it's a wood structure on the edge of the edge of the locks here and uh, it's it's part of the photograph it's also something I saw there so I'm just putting that in just to show a little interest and then I'm going to come down here uh, at the edge I'm gonna put there's a little shadow there's a little bit of dark at the bottom where the water has uh, wet the bottom and uh, use the round brush again there'll be a little there'll be a little shadow pattern here in the water just just to show you know reflection in the water just a little bit 
There'll be a little reflection over here on the next to the piling. And there'll be a, there'll be a reflections along here. Now another thing, uh, just to add more detail, is uh, these little. Let's see, make sure you can see. I'm gonna turn a little bit so I get an angle. I can do this. Uh, these are part. This is part of the. The wooding, the wood parts that uh, go across here, and individual pieces of wood show the shape of those, and that'll show the characteristic of this element of this site because this is part of the locks. And uh, people go down here. I see a lot of people uh, fishing. Uh, they'll do crabbing. Uh, they, they crab and fish along the edge here. And it's a lot of fun to watch them uh, to do that. And I've, I've painted it down here several times. You know, it's been a because of the situation we've been living under for so long. Uh, I really haven't had a chance. This is the first time I've been out there in about two years, so it was really a really a nice opportunity to get out and do some plein air painting again. Uh, it's, been, it's been a while since I got out there and, and actually painted, so it was nice to get on location. So not, not there wasn't too many any changes that I saw, but there was it was the newness of it, and the fact that I hadn't been out there for a while. So it was a nice memories that I did. Okay. Uh, these poles have got these are brown poles that come up. Yeah, one last section. That's going to be the top of the trees, and uh, we'll wind this uh, wind this up this demonstration up here. Okay. I want to show you that technique. I got uh, before I do that. Let me go in and uh, do the trees here. Uh, I'm going to put in some some tree trunks here into the edge edge of the painting here. I'm using the round brush. Just to give me a little. Uh, control over the size and so forth. Put some branches on there because there were these trees had lots of branches on there. Were very little limb, very little leaves on them. All all branches. But when the once spring gets going, by May it'll be uh, these these trees will be loaded with with uh, leaves and blossoms and so forth. So they're, they're really they're very, very beautiful during the summer, winter, spring, or, or during the summer, during the summertime. Lots of, lots of leaves out here, and the shade. You saw I didn't have much shade when I was painting. There's a lot more during the summertime. Okay. Now what I'm going to do now is going to mix up a little bit of that uh, green, dark green, which is the yellow mixer. marine blue and I'm going to dampen the brush down take the water out make sure it's dry take the water out and then I'm going to do that stroke I was talking to you about and up here up here behind the there's a uh, there's other trees behind this row of trees here so this will simplify but instead instead of having to paint every little branch and every little uh, part of the structure, this gives you the idea of what's back there because it's a so just dry brush, take out all the extra water on the paper on the towel. What I'm doing, take the extra water out, and then use that side brush stroke and that will give the indication of those uh, trees up behind those all evergreens. Okay. Now, the rest of the brush out, and I'm going to go ahead and put some brown now. These these other trees had brown in them, so I'm going to use a bit of brown. Just like I did on the demo. Um, 
and here I'm just going to scrape in some indications of small branches here. And that's what they were. They were small branches all over the place, but they hadn't, there were no leaves on them yet. They were just small branches. Just indicating that there's going to be a lot of, be a lot of leaves out there eventually. So this technique here is a, is a technique to fill in an area, uh, just to give a little description, but not much detail. Let's see one thing I'll put a little bit of brown, a little bit of gray across here. I'm gonna wipe that. I'm gonna put a little bit of color on my brush, not much. It takes a little bit of spruce sand. I'm just gonna go over these uh these cables here because they're just too white, so I'm gonna knock them down just a little bit. So cables that hold the poles together. Okay, then I'm going to take uh, a little bit of brown, a little dark brown, and I'm going to indicate some of these uh, filings. So just indicate some of the separate, these are little indications that these are separate pile, separate logs that are part of the piling. Just a hint, just an, just an indication. And then a few more back here where this one is, uh, these just Okay. I think one more area I want to do, so one area here is showing off a little bit. So let me just put a little bit of dark back in here. Knock that color down just a little bit. So now I'm analyzing the I'm analyzing the colors I have here, so I'm, I'm knocking down some of these whites, some of these colors, and a little bit over here. This part of the painting here. Okay. Now the last thing I want to do is uh, uh, on this little stop and go. It's really important because right now. Uh, as you go through the locks, so there's a there's a signal, a little like it's like a traffic sign, or just indication that the you know stop and go. So there's a little the top light is red to stop, and that that's when everybody holds up. And then at the bottom, the only time I'm going to use green is right now, and I've got a little bit of green number one. So this is the only green I have that I'm using in the palette, and I'm going to put that right down here. And so that when that goes on, that's the go. So the stop and go light. Okay. Let me take off the mask. Let me take off the uh, the tape here. Make it look a little better. Let's see, I cut down. I cut down the size of the painting a little bit so I can get it on. Okay. Now you can see, uh, you can see from the from the original sketch, uh, I didn't have a, the detail I had here, and of course the detail and so forth. But that's the purpose of the sketch was to get the masses, uh, the masses of the grass and the background of the po posts. And the building itself, and then maybe some extras like the, the trees and the and the light post. Now, what I've done now, I, because before the uh, before the demonstration today, I did another painting earlier, and I'll show that to you also. So I did this one. Now here, I took a little more time in uh, in presenting the material. But basically, uh, I did the same thing I did here on, on the demonstration as I got, and you'll notice this part in here, if you look at the photograph, if you look at the photograph, there was this, it was this rusty metal edge here on the side. And so I wanted to capture it. And that's what that is right there. That's that rusty edge side uh, on the in front of the locks.
Okay. Okay, let me take it back to the main camera. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that concludes my uh, uh, plein air visitation, the uh, recon trip that I made uh, to capture the data and to also uh, test out and check out my equipment and uh, make sure I had everything to go. Plus, also I was experimenting on videotaping because to get the right angle, uh, to get the, uh, how does, if I'm going to zoom in on a certain thing or am I going to take extra photographs or so forth. It was a little bit chilly that day. This was last week, but it was like 52 degrees out there. And you could see the wind was blowing a little bit, a little cool. So I was out there maybe 25, 30 minutes. So that was a quick trip. But I was able to capture quite a bit uh, in that short period of time. And that's all I wanted to do. I want to come back to the studio and uh, show you what I had learned and also to put together a painting with a little more detail in it. And I think it's what we accomplished today. So uh, thank you for joining me today. And... Uh, how about giving me some comments and also uh, any questions you have? Give me a give me a like, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or sign up on my uh, Facebook page, and uh, let me know what you think about today's video. So uh, I'll be broadcasting again next Thursday at two o'clock. So I'll see you then.